On this worksheet, we're going to look at three pretty tricky problems that are asking us to rank substances based on their acidity or basicity in terms of weak versus strong. Now, the first problem that we're looking at are a bunch of amines. So these are all bases. And there's a couple of different variables that we want to take into consideration when we're trying to make the decision about which one of these is the weakest base. First of all, the first thing that we want to consider is that aromatic amines are always going to be weaker bases than alkyl amines. So an aromatic amine is a weaker base than a non-aromatic or just a plain old alkyl amine. So an amine that just has regular non-aromatic alkyl groups on it. Uh, and what, what that's gonna help us with is just this compound right here. This is an aromatic amine, so is this, so is this. These are all aromatic amines, and that means that all of these are gonna be weaker than this, which is just a regular old alkyl amine. So we're gonna label this as our strongest of all the amines. And I'm just gonna give it a number four. We'll say that our strongest is the number four. Um, now the other thing that we want to take into consideration with the rest of these, because they are all aromatic, we want to consider what will the structure be of the molecule when the nitrogen is protonated and will that protonation cause the compound to lose its aromaticity. So will protonating our nitrogen cause uh, a loss of aromaticity, either making it non-aromatic or anti-aromatic. So if we look at these guys, this guy over here, um, this compound is aromatic because of the lone pair of electrons on this nitrogen. So altogether we have two for six electrons, which makes it aromatic. And we also have a lone pair of electrons on this nitrogen right here. Uh, although it's not part of the aromaticity of the compound. Since there are two nitrogens in this molecule, there are actually two options in terms of protonating. We could protonate at this nitrogen or we could protonate at this nitrogen. If we protonated at this nitrogen, that lone pair of electrons would be used to actually form that bond to hydrogen. And that would cause this nitrogen to no longer be part of the continuous system of P orbitals. So this molecule would become um, non-aromatic if it got protonated at this particular site. However, we've got this other nitrogen here on reserve. So if this nitrogen gets protonated, we get a molecule that looks like this. Um, this molecule hasn't lost its aromaticity. It still has two, four, six electrons. Every atom is still participating in the continuous system of p orbitals. It's still going to be aromatic. Um, so this molecule is a pretty reasonable base. Let's take a look at this molecule over here. Um, this molecule, what is causing it to be basic? We've got these two double bonds um, plus this lone pair of electrons, two, four, six, that's, that that's what makes it aromatic. When this molecule gets protonated, we have to use that lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen, uh, which causes this molecule to become non-aromatic. This nitrogen is no longer part of the continuous system of p orbitals, so this becomes non-aromatic. And in terms of basicity, this is pretty bad. Like this molecule is not going to want to get protonated. It doesn't want to lose its aromaticity. This is probably going to be the weakest base. I'm just going to go ahead and label that. I'll put a question mark by it because we're not 100% sure until we look at our last example. So for our last example, um, here's our nitrogen. If our nitrogen gets protonated like that, has this compound lost aromaticity, we still have two, four, six electrons, so it's still aromatic. Like this first example, protonation doesn't do anything for aromaticity at all. So uh, we'll go back to this one. This is our weakest. We'll give it the number one, meaning that it's our weakest um, base. And the reason that it's the weakest because, is because protonation causes a loss in aromaticity. Which means it doesn't want to get protonated, doesn't want to be a base. Next, we're going to look at some molecules that are not amines. These are all um, benzoic acid derivatives, and we want to rank these in order of the, their acidic strength. 
So to help us do this, we really want to think about what these molecules are going to look like after they have been an acid. And so that would mean what do these molecules look like after they have lost their hydrogen? So what I'm going to do is just deprotonate all of them. We're going to get rid of all of these hydrogens and we'll put a negative charge on those oxygens. This is what the molecules will look like. And we want to consider the stability of these deprotonated carboxylic acids. The most stable deprotonated or conjugate base came from the most acidic or most reactive, I'm just going to say strongest acid. And it doesn't make a lot of sense to say that the most, the most stable conjugate base is equal to the strongest acid, so I'm going to edit that as well. The most stable conjugate base came from the strongest acid. So we, what we want to do is figure out which one of these is the most stable. Now, in terms of stability, we're looking for something that can stabilize the negative charge on this oxygen atom. And the only thing that's different about these molecules is the, the functional group that is para to that benzoic acid group. We want to look at something that is going to help withdraw or delocalize the electron density from this negative charge away from the oxygen atom. So we want to look for something that's going to pull electrons in this direction. Now we know from our aromatic reactions that of all of these groups, um, the OCH3 as well as the Cl- with the lone pair of electrons on that atom that's directly attached to the ring, all of these are electron donors. So these functional groups donate electron density into the ring, which is not what we want to do. We want something that's taking electron density out of the ring. But these guys are gonna donate electron density into the ring through resonance. So these two are definitely not going to be our strongest acids because these functional groups down here are not gonna help to stabilize this negative charge. Likewise, we learned that alkyl groups are also electron donors. They're like the opposite of electronegative. So they're pushing electron density into the ring through an inductive effect. There's no resonance involved. That's just what they do. And that just kind of leaves us with this nitro group. This is the, the only one that's left. As a reminder, that nitro group is a single bond oxygen and a double bond oxygen and a positive charge on the nitrogen and a negative charge on one of the oxygens. And this is stabilized, the nitro is stabilized by the movement of electrons out of the ring down into the nitro group. So this is what we're looking for. We're looking for this functional group that brings electron density down and out of the ring. So it's gonna be this one right here. This is the most stable conjugate base, and then that means that the carboxylic acid that it came from was the strongest acid. And we've got one more problem that's pretty similar, again, being asked to rank compounds in order of acidity. So again, we want to think about what these molecules look like after they have been an acid, after they have been deprotonated. These are all alcohols. It's not quite the same as a carboxylic acid, but we're still going to be applying the same general concept to it. Which of these compounds is going to be best at helping to stabilize that negative charge? Another tool that we have that we didn't use in that last example is ARIO. ARIO helps us make predictions about stability of different compounds because, again, the most stable conjugate base that we're going to find here of these four is not equal to, it came from the strongest acid. This time we're actually being asked to rank all of them, not just to find the strongest acid. So the most stable conjugate base is going to have come from our conjugate acid. So let's use REO. A stands for what atom has the negative formal charge, and for all of these it's a tie, so we can't use the A variable. The next variable here is R, and that's resonance. If we have resonance, then that helps to stabilize our conjugate base. Um, we can have resonance in a lot of different ways. It doesn't have to be good. We can 
delocalize these electrons that are inside the ring. We can use this aromatic ring to help delocalize. Um, for all three of these, we have resonant structures. Not good ones, but they exist. This does not have any resonant structure at all. So this is going to be the weakest. So let's give this, let me try to be consistent. What did I do up here? Weakest, we're going to give weakest uh, the number one. The next thing that we want to look at is induction. So this would be withdrawing electron density um, due to electronegative elements or resonance or something along those lines. And to help us understand the inductive effects, we're going to be using the same kind of um, thought process as we used up here. Looking at this chlorine right here, because it has a lone pair of electrons, it's going to actually be using resonance to dump electron density into the ring and towards the negative charge on the oxygen, which is really bad. Like that's, that's not good. Um, our nitro group we saw helps to delocalize by pulling electron density away from the ring. So we can delocalize electrons down and out, and that's going to help us stabilize this. So this is definitely going to be the strongest of all of our acids. We'll give this a number four. And now we've just got to figure out the difference between these two. Um, so this one here doesn't have any inductive effects at all. There isn't anything down here at all to either stabilize or destabilize. This one, we saw that the chlorine is like actually hurting the compound in terms of its stability. So it's not the weakest, but it's definitely going to be the next weakest. So that's going to get a number two. And that just leaves this guy kind of fitting in in the middle um, with number three.